This is Blair with Revit Auto, and in this video we'll be doing a quick review of the Zurich ZR Pro. If you want to see more videos diving deeper into the special functions of this scan tool, be sure to smash that subscribe button to stay up to date. Starting with the unboxing, the packaging is really nice. The scan tool, OBD2 connector, extender, and accessories have a proper fit. Inside the box you have a plastic bag with all of your documents, including the activation card. What you get is your scan tool, OBD2 connector extender, the Bluetooth OBD2 dongle, charger, and an extra stylus. In my hand, everything feels like it's a quality piece. You don't have the cheap plasticky feel. It's got that rubberized kind of harder outside piece, uh, especially on the case of the scan tool. It's got a serious heavy duty I would imagine it's really good at taking an impact, but I have not dropped mine yet. So inside the bag, you have all of the other details that you're going to need to kind of get started. It has a little congratulations, shows you the other Zurich lineup, has a quick start manual, as well as a larger owner's manual that will answer any of your in-depth questions about the actual product, troubleshooting, etc. But one thing that I was doing when I read through this thoroughly is that it said that you should fully charge your tablet or your scan tool up before going through and doing the initial download. So when I plugged mine in, it actually already had like 96 or 97% battery life. So I just went ahead and charged it up all the way and then got started with the actual registration process, which took me about 45 minutes from start to finish. So booting this thing up for the first time, it took about 30 seconds to get to the home screen. And then it took about another 15 seconds for the program to open up initially. Most of the time when I go from starting this thing up to using it on a car, it's about 45 seconds. So in the video right now, I am just getting this thing online hooked up with our Wi-Fi because that's what we have to do to finish the product registration portion as well as start to download the software that is for each individual manufacturer onto the tool. Breezing over it, you click on my profile, new registration, you enter in all of your details that you have, it takes you to the next step which you have to enter in your serial number and your product key so that you can tell that it wasn't a stolen item or something like that. And then you go ahead, do your finalization and it brings you to the next step which is to go ahead and start installing manufacturers specifications and programs that you will use. Now one tip I always give people whenever you are installing software, make sure that you are just installing the software on the vehicles that you are going to be using. So I live just outside of Washington DC, so all of these Daewoo's and all these other foreign European cars and stuff that I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to download it because it's just going to slow down the software and this is a universal thing across all scan tools. So if you're just going to be doing your American cars and some European cars, just download those quick way to just keep your scan tool running as quickly as possible. So this whole process, like I said, took about 45 minutes from start to finish. The actual update of the software for each manufacturer only took about 15 or so minutes. It was pretty quick. So now we're going to go ahead and start with our very first vehicle, which is a 2007 Mustang GT. So this was the first car that I used the scan tool with, and I was happy to do so because we knew it was a one owner car. And the OBD2 dongle was too large to fit underneath the dash so what I used was that little orange extender so that I could easily communicate with it. So now we have the scan tool hooked up to the car and I'm going to open up the software for the first time and see what it's like to actually use the Diag software. So since this was the first time it had to do a firmware update on the VCI connector and it just did it wirelessly. I didn't have to touch anything uh, it did it all automatically and it was pretty quick. So I'm going to just kind of let you guys watch how I went through this vehicle. I'm going to speed this next section up and show you all the features and that I played around with on this car. So the first thing I did is just click forward, automatically search, and it was able to successfully decode and tell me what I was actually working on. And I knew that all that information was true before I started, so I knew I was starting off on the right foot. The first feature that I explored was system scan and what this does is it tells you all of the systems that this scan tool can communicate with 
that you can also then dive into deeper. So this is a really quick way. If you know that you have an issue with the ABS, you can just go to system scan. It'll say equipped, which means that you know that you can gain access to it. And then you can go ahead, click on that and continue. But I always like doing a super simple task with each new scan tool. And I just like going into the PCM, ECM, whichever it's called on that. And then I go ahead and see if I can get the fuel pump to activate. And what that tells me is that this scan tool has the very basic bases for being able to go ahead and make sure I have bi-directional functions. So I was really excited when I was able to get that. I was able to get the fuel pump to prime. Uh, it did it to 95%. I didn't have a fuel gauge on it to tell you what pressure we were at, but I could audibly hear that the fuel pump was in fact turning on. So that always makes me get the warm and fuzzies, making sure that I have a tool that I can actually use for some sort of diagnostic. And I've dove in way deeper in to see what this thing can do. I've worked on an Isuzu FER with a 7.8 liter straight six Duramax diesel, which is uh, one of those big cab over box trucks. It's like a T6500, 7500 series, if you're a GM guy. But this scan tool does have the ability to do a bunch of different things and it has those needed items that you have to use as a diagnostic type professional mechanic. So for this next section, what I went ahead and did is I unplugged everything, plugged it all back together, just making sure that everything's working correctly. And I did a clean restart. And this time I just wanted to see what the health report tab would do. And what that does is that's the deep scan that goes through every single system on the car that this scan tool can communicate with and tells you what all the codes are. And it's pretty quick. So from start to finish, this took about 10 minutes. So from hooking up the scan tool, repowering on the Zurich and making sure everything was going well, I went ahead and just clicked it all. So clicking through 10 minutes, you got all your codes right in front of you. And we knew that we had a issue with the TPMS on this car uh, because the light was turning on. But all these other things were just kind of uh, lack of communication codes, which all pretty much came from the fact that the battery on this car had died uh, because it's only got like 30,000 miles on it, one owner, and it's not driven in the wintertime. It was just like that Sunday driver. So we had to put a new battery in it. But what I found super cool was that you could click on a code on this scan tool. And if you're connected to the internet, you can click search and it will bring you to like a Google search page and will show you what is the most common search feature for that. So that's a pretty handy little tool. We use Identifix in the shop and on the road. So that's typically what I always go to is Identifix. But if you are just a DIY guy and you don't have any access to that or you just want to check the forms, it's a really cool quick feature. I wanted to throw a real curveball at the scan tool, so we grabbed a 95, yeah, a 1995 Jaguar XJ6. Now, in the year of 95, Jag started updating to the OBD2 setup, so there are a couple of cars out there that are 95 that have an OBD2 dongle. Don't worry, guys, I know that 96 was the year when it became the big ticket item where all cars were mandated to have OBD2, but this 95 was equipped with it, so don't go on crazy all about this. So we were able to hook up to this JAG, and I was surprised that we were actually able to connect and figure out what code we were getting out of the ABS module, because that's what's been plaguing this car. Uh, the owner picked it up a couple weeks ago, wanted to have a couple of touches done here and there, and he was tired of the ABS light flashing on and off. So I was really shocked that we were able to get this scan tool to communicate with a car of that age, especially a European car. So I am really impressed with that ability there. I didn't try to do the auto read or the auto VIN on this. I just went through manual selection. So on this specific year JAG, you click the other model year and then what you do is you decode it by looking at the last six of the VIN number. So the last six digits give you kind of which year and range you have to be going through. So I had to run over to the car real quick, look at the last six, make some memorization and then go back, click it and away I went. But with the code, I was able to figure out what diagnostic plan to go with next. And on this Jag, we needed to use that orange extender because the dongle OBD2 VCI would not fit otherwise. 
Now this same day, I also was able to use this scan tool on a 2005 Honda Accord, and it had all of the same features that you would expect to out of a scan tool of this caliper. Now what I wanna to touch on before everyone falls asleep from how long this video is, is that this scan tool is not just a code reader. It is a fully bi-directional scan tool that will allow you to do advanced level diagnostics that you could only do with a scan tool of this tier. So we have been able to bleed ABS pumps with this scan tool, program new key fobs, program uh, all of your simple little PCM VIN recodes, we can't, you can't do any actual programming, which you would reserve for something like my Autel Maxisys with the J-Box. Now, I wanted to touch really quickly on the fact that I was able to use this on an Isuzu FVR turbo diesel, and I hooked it up, not expecting anything, and I was given the codes for the EGR. So the next thing to do is to test the EGR valve. See that the EGR solenoid's at 20% value. And this is right now, this is zero, so if I pull it out, it should want to pull it back in. But then I commanded the scan tool to hold it at 20%, and this is what happens. So that is the EGR solenoid trying to pull it back in. So now in this video, I'm trying to actuate the EGR solenoid and I was able to confirm that this solenoid was bad. I also had my Autel Maxisys CV with me and I had this same result. So I know it's not the scan tool, it's in fact the EGR valve. Another handy feature is the power balance test and we use this feature on a 2005 F250 with a 5.4 V8 and the battery on this truck was dead, so there was no check engine light on. So we started this thing up, went to the power balance test, and it told us which cylinder we were having an issue with, just swapped out the coil, uh, always the first thing that I always do when it's a car of that age and mileage, and the misfire went away immediately. So that's a really helpful uh, feature that this scan tool has. Now in the three months or so that I've been using this scan tool, there have been many, many, many updates that have kind of gotten rid of the clunkiness that I first experienced when using the scan tool. So I'm really excited to see what else they're going to come out with. I'd like to see some better graphing, uh, being able to click the graphs and merge data together. That would be super cool. But overall, it's a pretty nice package that you get. So the battery life lasts really long. I get probably a full day of using it without having to recharge it, although I do typically recharge it sometime throughout the day. But it's a really good handy scan tool to have in our van. I hope that you guys enjoyed this review video. There's a lot of things that I didn't get to touch on in it, but I will be doing in-depth dives into those type of features later, like the fact that this is an Android powered tablet and you can use all of your Google products if you are a Gmail user on it. If you are looking for a simple, easy to use code reader, check out our review of the Autel MD808 or check out this ZR13 also sold by Harbor Freight. Be sure to smash that subscribe button because our next scan tool video is going to be going over the Autel Maxisys CV, which is just the best scan tool out there right now for medium and heavy duty trucks. Thanks for watching. This is Blair with Revit Auto and happy motoring.